Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Lent. And a special welcome to our visitors and our guests, of which I don't see too many, so I'll skip that part. But there are some uh, throwback treats down in the uh, community hall, so we hope you'll stay and uh, eat some of the Little Debbie-style treats that are down there. Um, I'd like to ask that you keep some people in your prayers this morning. Um, just mentioning uh, Lisa's gone, but Sue is here, so thank you, Sue, for being here and uh, leading us through the singing. Um, the family and friends of Barb Stewart we keep in our prayers. Barb passed away this last week, and her funeral will be this coming Friday at 12 noon. So if you can help with a salad or dessert or something like that, I put a sign-up sheet out there. If you could sign up, I'll give Nancy Vander Lindy a call and let her know that there are some other things coming. We also keep in our prayers uh, Wyatt Gilbert. Um, young Wyatt Gilbert was skiing, skiing or snowboarding. He broke his left arm and he broke his left leg. I guess you're gonna say he'll be all right. Anyway, yeah, well, you'll get that in a second. But anyway, he will be all right. He had surgery though, so left arm, left leg. Um, we're gonna bless a blanket at the 11 o'clock service for him today and uh, make sure that he gets that. But prayers for Wyatt, I think he's gonna be uh, limping and hurting uh, in, a, in a big way for a while. Yvonne Midas, uh, many of you know Yvonne, she lives downstate now. She drove the bus for years um, in town. She's gonna be entering hospice care soon, we think, if she hasn't already. So prayers for her family. Maudie Anderson in our prayers. Um, little Liam, uh, Carol Stack's uh, great-grandson is in our prayers. Ron Dykster, Carolyn Vitell, Abe Robinson, seventh grader with leukemia. Um, and uh, yeah, so lots of people on the list. So maybe be, keep them in your prayers. Flowers today are in celebration of Lee and Jane Schwacko's wedding anniversary. Coming up, Lee. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, Lee. It's the same day every year. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Congratulations, you guys. Lutheran World Relief begins meetings uh, this week, and so those of you that would like to come and help out, Tuesdays, um, the second and fourth Tuesdays, I believe, right, of each month, 9 a.m. until noon, and uh, if you have any questions, see Jane Schwacko or others, or Colleen up front. Uh, communion today, like usual, um, offering plates will be passed. Uh, we're talking about uh, starting to come around the altar maybe soon for communion, which we did for so long, and sharing the peace. So we'll discuss that at church council this month. Um, the second midweek Lenten service will happen Thursday, 1130. We meet in here, and then that's followed by soup and bread. If you'd like to come and join us, um, that would be wonderful. Uh, book study continues today, What is the Bible? by Rob Bell, and we'll meet down in the community hall 10 to 1045. Any other words we should hear this morning, Colleen? Okay. Um, we're also meeting Friday from 9 to 12 uh, for crafting. If anybody has ideas, bring them to us. If you got crafting you're doing, bring them to us. Um, we'll bring some to you if you show up. <laughs> and Tuesday, you do not have to sew. You can come and do all kinds of things to get these, things, these quilts together. They don't have to be sewing. There's cutting. There's pinning, there's ironing, there's you name it. It's there to be done. You do not have to sew, and it is not limited to ladies. Great. Thank you. I just come and talk. Yes, you can do it. Come and drink some coffee. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Lent. Would you please stand as we prepare our hearts this morning? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. I want what we have done. And by what we have left undone. Forgive us and 
give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Thank you. Moses, go. 
Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you strike stuck into the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Responsive reading comes from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The highest of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship our land now. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Pardon not your hearts, as that Meribah, as on the day of Massa in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. For eight years I loathed that generation, saying, The heart of this people will go astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous per person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here ends the readings. city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks who drank from it? 
Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place that people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. And when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see, a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to meet him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do know nothing about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, <coughs> they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> I think they put the longest readings during Lent, right? <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh, it's going on. If Jesus was any kind of decent teacher, he would not have given this woman the time of day. She was an unclean woman, a Samaritan. And everyone knows that Jews hate Samaritans. That's why the disciples are astonished when they come back and Jesus is talking to this lady. She's so ashamed to be seen, this woman, that she comes to collect water at the hottest part of the day, when no one else is going to be at the well. Her reputation is trash. Married five previous men, and now living with a sixth. But do you know what Jesus does? Jesus talks to this woman as if she is his equal. The Son of God, God's very presence in this world, talks to this woman as if she is God's equal. And he chooses her, out of all the people he could have chosen, he chooses her to be his first apostle. 
Uh, the word apostle means sent. This is the first time that Jesus sends somebody to tell the good news. This woman, this Samaritan woman, right, previously married five times, we don't know the situation, but he sends her to be his first apostle. Who would Jesus sit with today? Who would Jesus see as his equal today? You can bet that it would be somebody who is struggling. Maybe somebody struggling with their identity, like a transgender kid. Maybe it would be a woman who had, been, who had received so much abuse that she couldn't trust anymore. <clears throat> not just trust men, but not trust people. The problem with following Jesus is this. We are called to sit and to love those who are out of place. Those who have no one else to pay them any mind, any attention. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are called to sit with them. Today we have this amazing condensed story of confusion and understanding, a search for meaning and purpose, and how you and I often miss the blessings of God. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we're sitting with the wrong people. Because we have become overly focused on the life and the water that we can see and touch and feel and experience. But we've missed the bigger picture. We've missed the living water, which is the very presence of God in our lives at all times. I'd like to point out a couple of really powerful things in this story. First, notice that Jesus comes to the woman. That always seems like it's the, it's the movement with Jesus, isn't it? He's always going to people. He's always kind of bursting in. He's always coming into their lives. This is the power of God, that God will not leave you and I alone until we sit with the Samaritan woman. He's going to seek us out. He's going to search for the lost sheep. He's going to put us on his shoulders and carry us home. <clears throat> He's going to walk with us on the road. He's going to notice our cries for help and healing. Jesus is going to eat fish with us. That has to be good news for Norwegians. I mean, just really. He's going to eat fish with us. Jesus has a gift to give to this woman. But she neither recognizes the gift at first, nor the God who gives it to her, nor recognizes who she is even talking to, right, at first. She's just interested in getting her water, filling her bucket, and getting back home before she has to interact with people from the city, from her community. But Jesus has a gift of living water, he says. He says, you know what, if you would have asked me for living water, I would have given you that, and it's like a spring that wells up inside of you, and you'll never be thirsty again. And I love the woman's reaction. She's like, well, give me that water, and I won't have to keep bringing my bucket to the well, right? That's not the, that's not the water he's talking about. The woman begins to see God because God has taken his time to talk to her. She still doesn't quite understand she still doesn't know who Jesus is. But in spite of all of that, she asks the question. Jesus helps her form the question, and then she asks the question, Sir, give me this living water, she says. She's confused by Jesus' talk about living water. And don't you think people are often confused by our religious language? I often think about that when somebody I know is brand new to the church and they walk in and they sit down in a pew and I'm thinking, all right, what's the, what are the readings? Is this going to really throw them for a loop? All this religious sort of language, right? Justification, mercy, sanctification, grace, dot, dot, dot. You know, we just kind of throw those words around in the church. But if you're new to the church, you're like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. That's this woman. She's like, living water, what's that? But Jesus meets the woman where the woman is. He doesn't require her to meet him where he is. He invites her. He calls her. He beckons to her. 
but he meets her where she is. That's what you and I should be doing in the lives of other people. We are called to do the same. Also, what does Jesus tell the woman to do immediately after asking for living water? Jesus said, you should ask for this living water. The woman goes, sir, give me this water. Then what's the next line in the gospel without looking? <laughs> what, what does he ask the woman to do? Go get, her Go get your husband. He sends her. All right, this, is, this kind of freaked me out. What if that is the living water? What if that's it? When Jesus says, she says, give me the living water, he says, go back home. Go to the community that you're trying to avoid and invite them. Tell them to come and see. What if that is the living water? What if it's that easy that you and I come here, we worship, we sing, we confess, we hear God's word, and then we're to go out and to just say to people, come and see. Come and see. That is the living water because that's the presence of God in the lives of other people. Only water that is flowing out is living water. Also, this woman has had five husbands. We don't know if they've all died or she's been divorced or whatever. But instead of ignoring this woman's pain of these relationships, lost relationships, it, Jesus goes right at it. Did you notice that? Go get your husband, he says to her. He knows what's going on, right? We find out. It's like, oh, yeah, well, go get your husband. Um, I, sir, I have no husband. He goes, you're right about that, right? You've had five, and the guy you're with now isn't your husband. Maybe you've been so broken and hurt and, and overwhelmed by life that, that, that you're just trying to survive, right? But he doesn't avoid her pain. He goes right at it. And I wonder how many of us do that with such grace and love. The reason he does it is because he loves her, not to embarrass her. And it makes this connection that this woman goes back into town and she's like, that guy told me everything about my life. He knew all about me. That's what people experience when you talk to them about what's most important in their life. When you sit with them at the well and you share some time. This woman comes to get her water at noon, the hottest part of the day. How come? Because she doesn't want to talk about it. If you have people in your life, or maybe you're one of them from time to time, it's like, I don't want to talk about it. When I'm ready, I'll let you know, but I don't want to talk about it, right? And Jesus just doesn't seem to take that clue, right? He's like, oh, I'm going to talk about it anyway, type of thing. <clears throat> Sometimes our bruises prevent us from living. And so Jesus wants to look at those bruises and help them heal. Sometimes our fears prevent us from loving. And so Jesus wants to deal with our fears so that we're more free to love one another. Sometimes our grief and our loss prevents us from believing. It's like, ah, I've risked it and I've lost too much. I don't want to risk anymore. And Jesus goes, keep risking. Come on, just keep risking. Christ has come to heal our bruises, our fears, and our griefs. He comes to offer us an incredible gift. And when we open our hands, our hearts will follow. Jesus sends this woman back to invite the people of the village that she's trying to avoid. And in inviting them with God's word and God's love and her enthusiasm, she is restored to relationship and connection with the very people she was trying to avoid. That is the living water. Jesus gives her the gift of life and reconnection. May we too begin to see God and hear the cries of our neighbor and experience the healing gift of faith. Amen.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we return to the waters of baptism during the season of Lent, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Dear God, be with us as we journey to the well to draw water. Remind us that there is often a deeper gift that we seek, a wider and more inclusive love than we are comfortable with, and a grace that invites us into a foundation of new life. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Grant mercy and power and healing to those who suffer war and the pain that is inflicted daily. Strengthen the people of Ukraine and bring an end to the fighting. Restore people's lives. We pray for all those who suffer and continue to suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of those who cry for help. Bring healing and strength to those who are hurting. We pray for the family and the friends of Barb Stewart, for strength and love and gratitude. We also pray for Maudie Anderson and Kim Eckstein, Mary Riegler, James McQueen, and Bob Allen, for Laura Withington, Nancy Bishop, Abe Robinson, and Barb Robotham, for Ron Dykstra, Eric Zwed, Dan Krug, for Brianna and Kathy and Craig, for Seth, for Tricia, Carolyn, Barb, Carl, and Kylie, along with the names we carry in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear God, bless the earthquake victims in Syria and Turkey and others who have suffered natural disasters around this world. Restore their lives and cities and surround them with help and support. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. <coughs> We give thanks for the flowers this morning, and we join in celebration with Lee and Jane Schwacko as they celebrate their wedding anniversary this week. May they be surrounded with love and always be found in gratitude, showered with your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. Please be seated and let us worship God with our offerings. <laughs>
Let us pray together. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but the words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, but come for all things are ready and all people are welcome at God's table. <laughs>
And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and always keep us in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. we give you thanks for seating us sitting with us at your table and serving us with the food of eternal life we who once were dead are now living members of your son awakened by the breathing of your spirit so send us out to awaken others to the mystery of your love which is revealed to all the world and the one who came to give himself away Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. the Blessed Holy Trinity keep you in his grace lead you in his light, and give you peace. serve the Lord.